Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about adrenal fatigue. I want to talk to you about how we can use adaptogens to support you in your adrenal fatigue recovery process and also two non-negotiable things that you need to know about healing adrenal fatigue. And I see people get stuck on these things over and over and over again. And if you take the adaptogens but you don't do the two non-negotiable things, you're not you're not going to recover it's re it's really really hard and i i want i want you to heal okay so i'm going to share these things with you in this video because it's really important you have this context so i'm going to help you figure out how to use adaptogens for the best effect but also two non-negotiable things that you need to be doing if you want to recover from adrenal fatigue and i say this from first-hand experience and from helping i would say estimating probably 150 people with adrenal fatigue up up to this point and i see these over and over again and i don't want you to fail on these on, on, on these two points where people get stuck. So how do we use adaptogens correctly to help you heal from adrenal fatigue? So it's gonna depend largely on your symptoms. I'm a huge believer in listening to your body through your healing process. And your symptoms are one of the, the most obvious and overt ways that your body communicates with you. If you have a symptom, it means something. That there's a, there's a, there's a meaning behind it. Whether you actually understand what that means or not depends on how you look at it but it is unquestionable that every symptom is a message. It's a message from your body. So if we can try and figure out what these messages mean, if we can try and interpret these symptoms, particularly around this, this, this concept of adrenal fatigue, we can figure out how your body is asking for help and how we can uh, apply adaptogens in the correct way. So before, before we talk about how we can do this, you, you kind of need to know what an adaptogen is. And there might be, that you, maybe you might be thinking, okay, well, I know what it is, but then there might be some people watching that don't. So let me just give you a 30 second intro into what an adaptogen is. So an adaptogen is a, it, they're usually plants. I think they're always plants, a plant-based compound. So like a herb or a, a mushroom or some kind of, some, some kind of like ve vegetation that gives your body something that helps it adapt. So you can hear that in the word adaptogen. It helps your body adapt. And the way that this works is through modulation. So you can look at, there's a couple of different types of modulation that occur here. You've got immunomodulation, you've got hormonal modulation, you've got lots of different things that are being influenced here. And what modulation basically means is instead of your body having a static response, so it's like you have this stress, you have this response, you have this bacteria, you have this response. It allows your body to be more adaptive in how it does it. So instead of having a, say you have a level one stress, but because you have adrenal fatigue, your body perceives it as a level five stress. Instead of releasing a small amount of stress hormones and causing an, a calibrated and appropriate level of, of, of stress of response, it actually like just explodes and you get this like massive stress response and it just feels completely uncalibrated. What an adaptogen can do here is help you turn that down a little bit. And it works the other way as well. This is why adaptogens are so good, is if you're under, they up you, and if you're up, they lower you. So depending on where you are, they're gonna adapt to help your body. This is why they're so effective for so many people. So on the other end of this, you could imagine you have stress of daily life. You know, you have to get up, you have to, maybe you have to work, maybe you have to take care of kids, maybe you have to do X, Y, Z. You have to, you have to do things in your life. These are all stresses. And stress isn't in, in and of itself a bad thing. Like you need stress because you need to, you need to do things in your life. But if your body can't produce enough stress hormones to get you through those stresses, you just collapse and you just fail and it sucks. You know, you, you, you have low motivation. You don't have enough energy. Like you just feel tired and drained all the time. These are indicators that your body is, is on the lower end and it actually needs a bit of pumping back up. But usually you've got both of these things happening at the same time. So it's like you feel tired, you feel lethargic, you just generally don't feel great. Maybe your sleep's not so good. Maybe you've got some food sensitivities and intolerances. Just overall, you're not feeling great. But then when you do experience, so like you're trying to avoid stress as much as possible. And then when you do experience it, you have like a level 10 response and it's just like, whoa, and it's completely, it's completely out of balance. It's completely... Um, uncalibrated is, is would be the would be like the optimal word that is uncalibrated calibration means you have a level one stress you have a level one response you have a level five stress you have a level five response you have a level 10 stress you have a level 10 response that's what you want if you're having a level five stress and your body can only give you a level one or level two response that's bad we need to modulate it we need to help it if you're having a level three stress and then your body is stimulating a level seven response that is also bad because now you're burning loads of excess resources on a stress that didn't require that so getting this right can be really really helpful in recovery because it helps your body stay in that optimal zone for healing that goldilocks zone where everything is just right 
So the way that these things, the way that these um, these adaptogens work is they contain different types of compounds that help the body in doing this modulation process. They help it figure out how it can adapt to stress correctly. So there are a bunch of different types of adaptogens, and I don't want to cover that in today's video because it's a very large topic, and it's not my like it's not the the place I know the most. You know, this is more about the application that I can really help you with. But different adaptogens are more beneficial in different situations. So you've got things like ashwagandha, you've got holy basil, you've got rhodiola, you've got a bunch of, like even, you could even consider like ginger and turmeric to some extent are, are have somewhat adaptogenic properties. There's, there's, there's loads. But honestly, there are hundreds. And, and this, is one, this is one of the mechanisms that traditional Chinese medicine works so effectively is many of these herbs that, that you that they use in like ayurveda and traditional chinese medicine they are adaptogenic and they help the body balance one way or the other so if you don't know that much the first place i would start would be just go on amazon and type adaptogenic supplement and you will find blends where they've got combinations of different herbs so you can get so you you've probably seen maybe like the adverts for like that four sigmatic tea so it's like a coffee replacement but it's got mushrooms in it so it's got like reishi and i don't remember the others but it's maybe like cordyceps or like there, there's a bunch of different types of medicinal mushrooms that you've probably heard of these are all adaptogenic you've got these other substances as well these these herbs these all help your body with adapting to stress so th the first place i would start if you just want to see how you feel is try a blend you know i got a I got a supplement that kind of got me into this the first time when I when I first tried an adaptogen and it had some reishi in it it had some ashwagandha it had some holy ba holy basil it had like two or three other herbs in it as well and like you you will feel it and the the, the good thing about using one like this is a lot of adaptogens work synergistically so they can help each other and support each other in bringing even more balance to your body and when you do it like this some of them are going to be more effective and some of them are going to be less effective and the ones that are more effective, you're going to feel. And the ones that aren't so effective, then it doesn't really matter because you've got other ones in there that are effective. There are more targeted ways of doing this. And if you were interested in, interested in pursuing that, I would actually suggest you talk to either like a naturopath, a traditional medicine practitioner, or, or an Ayurvedic practitioner who can look at it through that lens. And they will probably be able to help you figure out a more specific herb regime for you that's going to help your body with its specific symptoms adapt to the environmental stress that it's, that it's experiencing. So here's, here's, here's the magical bit. This, is, this, is, this has been my experience. How do, we, how do we use these effectively based on your symptoms? So you, the, the thing is, the, the most important thing when you're looking at adrenal fatigue is we're basically trying to preserve cortisol. That's what we're trying to do. In adrenal fatigue, you're basically running into a situation where your body is having this much stress and it can only produce this many stress hormones. And it, there's, a, there's a debt. It can't reach what it needs to. And this, this gap here is, is lethargy, is low energy, it's low, low motivation, it's like dopamine addiction tendencies. It's just generally kind of feeling a bit crap. Lower immunity, just generally not feeling that good. So what we want to try and do is make it so that when you have a stress, say you have a stress up here, you want your response to be adequate and to, to match and to not be over and to not be under, to be exactly the right amount. And for that reason, we want to make sure these substances are in the body before it's actually experiencing these stresses. So what, what we don't want to do is do something extremely stressful, go for a, a job interview, or try and get your kids dressed in the morning. Like, I don't know what stressful looks like to you right now. Whatever is really stressful for you, you don't want to do the stress and then take the adaptogen because the, the stress in the moment it's it's going to be you're going to be producing all of these stress hormones and you're going to be using them all up you're going to be burning through them and then you're going to hit that 3 p.m slump and you're just not going to have energy for the rest of the day because you've used all of all of the resources that your body had allocated up already we want to be preventative we want to take the adaptogen before the stress so when the stress hits we can handle it more 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 resiliently more responsively so we don't just dump all of these stress hormones out and then have nothing left for later we just dose out exactly the right amount and actually it will be less because these the way these things work your body actually gets sort of like more more bang for its buck like each molecule of stress hormone is actually worth one and a half you know you get a bonus it's like you get it, it makes it makes it so that your body can use these more efficiently so you will first of all you'll respond to that stress better so you won't under or over 
secrete these stress hormones, but the ones that you do, they're actually like more valuable. They're actually like giving you more value for money. So your body is getting more, more out of the work that it's doing, which is, I mean, that's just, that's just healing, right? The more you conserve, the, the more resources that you conserve for your body, the more that it has to spend on clearing energy deficits, cleaning toxins, fighting pathogens and boosting the immune system. You know, your body's smart. You save energy, it doesn't waste it. It just reallocates it somewhere else. So using them preventatively can be really helpful, especially if, so these are the symptoms you want to look out for. If you wake up in the morning and you're just low, like if you've just got this morning depression, this like AM, maybe up until like 12 or 1 PM, just depression. You just have no energy. Maybe you find yourself getting caught on your phone, just scrolling through like, or doing dopamine, like stimulating activities. So scrolling through reels or through TikTok or like just browsing social media or just doing things that aren't really productive. They're not really moving you towards where you want to go. And in a way it's kind of just distracting you from like how, how bad you actually feel. And maybe you haven't consciously realized how bad you actually feel. And that's just kind of become a normal behavior. But that's one really big key to look out for is just like low mood and low motivation, especially in the morning. It's your cortisol, your big cortisol release that's supposed to energize you and motivate you for the day and make you feel productive and want to go out and get out and do things. So if you're not getting that, that's a really good indicator. Second would be the 2 to 3 p.m. slump. So if at 2 or 3 p.m., maybe you felt energized in the morning, but then you reach 2 or 3 p.m. and it's like you're done for the day. You feel like you are exhausted and you want to go for a nap. And then maybe four or five or 6 p.m., you get this like really big energy spike all, all of a sudden. And you're like, where was this when I needed it earlier in the day? That's also a really good indicator that your stress hormones are in balance and adaptogen can be really, really helpful. And you would want to be using these again, preventatively. You want to be using these like within the first 30 minutes of waking up or with your breakfast or like really, really early in the day. Very, very important. So from there, we can look at uh, a couple more symptoms that you might be having. So just generalized brain fog. So throughout the day, but again, especially in that morning window and that 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 mid afternoon window, those are peaks of of brain fog um, that you could be you could be looking out for. Just generally feeling tired, like f for seemingly observably no reason. You just you just aren't energized. That's a really really good uh, indicator as well. And then we move on to the the second symptom set. And if you've got these, this second symptom set, you probably have the first ones as well, but these ones are additional on top. And if you're having these additional symptoms set, I would actually consider using your morning dose and having a dose before you go to bed as well. So in this second set, that's, that spike that you're having, that, that energy spike is usually hitting like right before you wanna go to bed. So we're talking like, 9 or 10 p.m. at night and then all of a sudden like depression disappears you feel energized you feel great it's like you, you finally feel good for the first time in the whole day you know you have energy you can think clearly you've got this energy spike you're just like where was this the whole day like i needed that the whole day and i didn't have it and now i have it at like 9 or 10 p.m this is you you're having another cortisol spike right before you're going to bed and this is actually really bad because your cortisol and your melatonin are inversely correlated. So if your cortisol goes up, your melatonin comes down. And melatonin is the it's the neurotransmitter that makes you feel sleepy and tired and makes you fall asleep and keeps you asleep. So if you're getting this, this spike right before you go to bed or if you are experiencing frequent wakings in the night or just the inability to fall asleep, these are all really good indicators that you're on a you're struggling with a, a later stage of adrenal fatigue here and taking an adaption before you go to bed could be very beneficial. It will help with that secondary response. And it, this is kind of also an indicator that your morning dose isn't enough. It's not getting you through the day. So having another dose in the, in the evening can be helpful because if we can improve your sleep, it's gonna make it so that when you wake up in the morning, you actually have a better cortisol response. Because if you have that second spike, like right before you go to bed, it's taking away from your cortisol response in the morning, which is the one that you need to be energized and to have energy throughout the day and to actually feel normal and like a, like a, like a semi-decent person. So based on those symptom sets, that should give you an idea of how you can use these things more, more optimally. But I wanna give you these, these two non-negotiables now. If you don't do these two things, 
you can do all the adaptogens you want. You can do all of the guided meditations. You can like create the most stress-free life. It still won't work. And this is because these two things cause the most stress to your body on a physiological level. The first is a deficit of rest. If you're not sleeping enough, if you aren't getting a, a, a surplus, an excess of rest, and I know like maybe you have insomnia, maybe you can't sleep, maybe you have other things holding you back from sleeping correctly. You still need to embrace rest as much as you're able to. So if that looks like laying down for a 15 minute power nap in the afternoon, if that means laying in your bed listening to an audio book before you fall asleep because you can't sleep, like whatever it is, you need rest. The best rest is sleep, un unquestionably. I, I know that for me, I needed 10 to 11 hours of sleep consistently for over a year to be able to recover from adrenal fatigue. And this included naps in the day when I felt tired and some other various factors like use of adaptogens and lots of other things, you know, 10, 11 hours. It, you can imagine your body has occurred like a debt. It has a sleep debt and it just needs extra hours to catch up. And you can chip away at that every night by just getting an extra half an hour, getting an extra hour, getting a power nap in in the middle of the day, getting some, getting some rest, getting in a space where you just feel relaxed. You will chip away at this debt that you've incurred. So a surplus of rest, that is the first ingredient, the first and most important thing. The second is a surplus of energy. And by energy, I literally mean calories. If your body does not have enough energy to survive, Every single stress that you experience is experienced as a life or death level of stress. So, you know, we were talking level two stress, level eight response. Well, if you, if you forget something on your way to work or if your kid just does something and it's just annoying, you know, if, you, if your body doesn't feel like it has the resources inside it to handle that stress, your blood sugars become imbalanced your stress hormone release is, is like way out of, out of proportion. Adaptogens can help, but what your body really wants at this time is to know we have the resources inside of us to survive this stress. And if you don't have an excess of energy, if you don't have a calorie surplus, every little stress that you experience through the day is a life or death level of stress to your body. And the whole point of, of, of of recovering, the whole reason we're using adaptogens is to reduce the level of stress impact on your body. And if because your blood sugars are becoming imbalanced or because your body's in a, in a calorie deficit and it just simply doesn't have the raw energy that it needs to function correctly, the stress response that you're experiencing throughout the day is completely uncalibrated to the level of stress that you're experiencing. And being in a, not, not having a, an energy surplus, so being in a maintenance or a calorie deficit is your biggest factor there. It's your single biggest factor. So you've got adaptogens, really, really helpful. But if you don't sleep enough and you don't rest enough and you don't have a calorie surplus, it, it honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make that much difference because these are the two fundamentals. And if you get these two things right, if you're sleeping well and you're eating well, and then yeah, obviously you need to manage your stress, you need to do these other things, like healing adrenal fatigue just becomes a matter of time because it basically is an energy and a rest deficit. So you provide energy and rest in a surplus. It's a simple equation. Your body can't, can't not heal. That's its natural state of being. And adaptogens can definitely smooth that process. So the use of adaptogens, you want to target these early in the morning before you have any of your stress. So when you do have stress, your body can modulate that stress response in a more healthy way, in a more balanced way. So taking them before you have the stress, very, very important. If you're having sleep problems as well and you're having this really like energy peak right before you go to bed, you could probably benefit from using adaptogens before you go to bed as well. What type of adaptogen to use? You can go on Amazon and just type adaptogen blend. Find a good one on there. You know, there's some pretty good reviews on things. You know, people are saying, this really worked for me. Well, it, it might work for you too. If you want a more targeted approach, I would look at working with either a naturopath because they work with herbs or a TCA, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, or an Ayurvedic practitioner, again, because they all work with different types of herbs. So they're very aware of how adaptogens actually influence and impact the body. So if you want a more personalized way of doing it, that's your kind of practitioner that you're looking for. But again, you can do all the herbs, you can do all this fancy stuff. If you do not have an, a rest surplus, and you do not have an energy surplus, your body cannot recover. It needs these things. These are non-negotiables. Your body needs them. I hope you found this video really helpful.
I hope you found it really uh, informative and gives you some actually uh, actionable steps. You know, you, you take something away from it. I find a lot of people stuck in the healing process. They're like drowning in information and you don't actually know what to do with it. So hopefully this gives you an idea of something you can actually do with it. Hopefully this gives you a takeaway. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. Leave me a comment. I'll get back to every single person. Just please make sure you tag me. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.